Look into the eyes. <laughs> you will be mesmerized, Steven Seagal. Uh, we all know Steven Seagal, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Steven Seagal movies. <laughs> all right. First of all, I'm going to get this out. That See, I grew up with Steven Seagal's movies. Uh, during those times where those, those movies are coming out, uh, you know, that... Going to see those in the theater and stuff. I mean, when you're talking about those early films that he did, Above the Law, Hard to Kill, Out for Justice, Under Siege, you know, he really broke down a boundary and brought that kind of uh, um, martial arts to America and did the American uh, variation of it, which was absolutely badass. Uh, so, you know, nobody ever seen stuff like that. So this was like, you know, big thing. So I will start by saying this. I'm not knocking Seagal, uh, although it is very comical. Uh, some of his films uh, doesn't, I just, I know he's had a rocky career and it's been very, uh, in some cases, very outlandish. But uh, as an entertainer, uh, as his movies did, uh, they entertained me greatly. I grew up with them. I can't, uh, can't take that away from it. Uh, so I always loved the original movies you know, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, so, but here's the funny thing is, let, let's actually, which I started thinking about this, which I, um, I got it pulled up here. Let's go through the names of the people the, the characters that he's played. And now, we all kind of know the basic uh, synopsis of all of his stuff. It's just like, I mean, you could literally read like a handful of them. And that's pretty much the synopsis and the storyline for every single one of them. It's always, well, he's a cop, but we don't know his, his background. <laughs> he's some kind of super secret agent guy that we don't ever, you know, like, oh, well... What's his background? His background's classified. We have absolutely no idea. In fact, they even went um, completely um, over the top, which is his directorial debut in uh, On Deadly Ground, which uh, they even had Arlie Ermey uh, on there where the guy said, hey, man, we're, he goes, you're deploying like a whole bunch of guys thinking that we're dealing with, like we're dealing with one guy. And Arlie Ermey, think, I think he does this line where he's like, he goes, my guy in D.C. says we're not dealing with the student, we're dealing with the professor. You know, this is the kind of guy that'll drink a gallon of gasoline and piss on your campfire. This is the kind of guy you can drop him off in the middle of nowhere with his bikini and toothbrush. And tomorrow morning, he's going to show up on your poolside with a million dollar smile and a fistful of pesos. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I mean, they, you know, they, so it's, they're very entertaining. Uh, so anyway, let's go through and actually look, read the, the, the characters' names that he's played. Uh, obviously, in the beginning, they were actually pretty cool. Uh, Nico Toscani, which is his first one, Above the Law, which is actually one of the best, the best ones he did. Um, now, honestly, uh, we'll roll through these, and I'll kind of tell you that um, my favorites really is like Out for Justice and Under Siege 2. I really think those, those two were probably the most, almost the most realistic uh, I could say. Um, all right. Mason Storm in Hard to Kill. John Hatcher in Mark for Death. Now, that's a, you know, there's a funny scene in Mark for Death where they got that Bronco and it's him and Keith David and they're driving like down this, this street and nobody seems to care that these two guys are completely causing World War III in the middle of the town. But they're going through and they're literally, they just open fire in the middle of this uh, town, just driving, they're chasing the bad guys. There's a scene where they're shooting, they're getting shot at with a shotgun. And if you watch this thing, he's like, Keith David says something to him. And I mean, you watch the windshield and the windshield takes a, a direct hit. And it just, it could have, even my dad was like, we were watching it. My dad goes, he'd be 
dead because that's that ball that shot bullet whatever just it just went boom right right there in his face like and it's like and this is not like something where it may have deflected off the windshield i think there was like a massive hole in the windshield like a basketball went through it <laughs> so i mean that's always like a funny scene to to think about um but all right john hatcher from mark for death and they always call him hatch they that's what they call him in it and then my favorite uh, name that he's got is an Alfred Justice Detective Gino Fellino. Uh, <laughs> and I actually made some grips uh, named after that character because uh, of the uh, picture I saw that was actually uh, his uh, 1911. All right, now obviously the most, probably the most recognizable one from Under Siege, Casey Ryback. Ryback, is that Ryback? Ryback's on that, on that boat. Um, on Deadly Ground, Forrest Taft, you can tell he was getting a little, uh, you know, artsy with his stuff, Forrest Taft. Uh, then he's Casey Ryback again, obviously in Ender Siege 2, uh, executive decision where he's actually like literally in the first part of the movie, Colonel Austin Travis, which I actually didn't even know that was his name in it, and then the Glimmer Man, Jack Cole. And then he's, uh, then he returns as... Jack Taggart in Fire Down Below. And guys, this is when it starts just getting kind of like, okay. Um, at least this one they give a little bit of thought in the Patriot. I remember renting that on vi videotape. That was the first time we were like, whoa, Seagal's movie's not in theater. It's on videotape. What, what, what? And we were going to rent it. And the guy outside the uh, video store was like, I don't know. You know, he's got, you know, so we were like, what? And so we were, you know, we were like, yeah, oh, we're diehard Seagull fans. This can't be. Uh, Dr. Wesley McLaren in uh, uh, The Patriot. Why does that sound like something from The the Simpsons? Hi, I'm Troy McLaren, or whatever. Uh, Orrin Boyd in Exit Wounds. Frank Glass in Ticker. Ticker was a weird one. I don't know. Uh, Ticker was like, that was like a bomb squad one that he did. And then uh, he came out to Half Past Dead, Sasha Petrosvedic. I, I don't know. Uh, the Foreigner, he's Jonathan Cold. And then he's Robert Burns in, or Professor Robert Burns in Out for a Kill. What a lazy title that is. Uh, Jake Hopper in Belly of the Beast, William Lansing in Out of Reach. I don't know if that's a play on the fact that he's from... Uh, Lansing, Michigan, I think it is. Uh, then he's Jack Miller in Clementine. I never even seen Clementine. Uh, Into the Sun, he's Travis Hunter. And then Submerge, he's Chris Cody. And Today You Die, he's Harlan Blank Banks. Um, and then he's Jonathan Cold again. Like, I don't know if that's like a, I think it's like another uh, sequel to The Foreigner. I'm like, oh, did they really get that lazy? Um, Mercenary for Justice, John Seeger. Maybe he was listening to the old time of rock and roll. Um, Shadow Man, Jack Forrester. No, Foster. Jack Foster in Shadow Man. And then in Attack Force, he's Marshall Lawson. That's right. Uh, Flight of Fury, which I don't even remember that one. John Sands. Urban Justice, Simon Ballister. Pistol Whip, Matt. Conlon. Then he's the cock puncher. <laughs> Jacob King. Tal. Ruslan Drakvek. Driven to kill. Uh, Roland Salinger in The Keeper. Shane Shane Daniels in uh, in um, the the Dangerous Man. And he's uh, Rogelo, uh, I don't know, Torres in uh, Machete. Now, by the way, that Machete was like the first time he went to the big screen since like 2002 by the time that came out. Uh, then he's like born to raise hell. He's like Robert Samuels, Maximum Conviction. Conviction is like just his name's Cross. And I think that's the one with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, Force of Execution, John Alexander. And then a good man, he's John Alexander again, which is a prequel to Force of Execution. Like, these are so good that you got to make a prequel and sequel. Um, Gunshot Straight, he's Polly Trunks. Never, I don't think I even saw that one. 
uh, Absolution Jonathan John Alexander, which is a sequel to A Good Man. So I guess that's a part of like so. Force of Execution and Good Man and Absolution are like a trilogy. Did not know that. Code of Honor, Robert Sykes. Then he's Jake in Sniper Special Ops. Uh, Asian Connection, uh, Jan Sarakiri. Uh, guess that's kind of cool. Uh, Decker, he's just Decker in End of Gun. Decker. Uh, Contract Kill, John Harmon. Uh, in Perfect Weapon, he's the director. Literally, that's his name, the director. Uh, Cartels, he's Harrison. Uh, China Salesman, Launder. Uh, Attrition, Axe. And Jack Alexander in General Commander. And Augustino Adar in Beyond Law. Um... Again, like <laughs> I know, and I know we're not trying to knock his stuff, but the I, I the majority of these, I would say, a good ninety percent of these are just like, did they like literally just like take like John Smith, Joe, Allen, Mick, you know, Ryan, and just cut up all these names, throw them in a bucket, and just went here, pick two, and then in some cases they just went, oh, we just got one, <laughs> um, but. You know, not all of his, uh, you know, there's some weird things in his films. And I don't know if it's like, um, I don't know if it's done on purpose or it's just the way he maybe uh, does some things. But I have noticed, and I've actually noticed as far back as Under Siege 2. And there's two scenes in it where he does it that I can remember. That one of the scenes is when he meets up with Morris Chestnut and he says to take off that white that white coat and I think he uses some colorful language in there but he says he goes like this to him take off that white coat and I don't know if the middle finger is like this gesture that he's doing um he also does it again in a movie when they're hanging on the on the cliff and the guy says hey where's where's the other guy or something he goes hey down there you know I mean I don't know maybe that's just the way he points you know it's kind of like Harrison Ford you know, but he's doing it differently now there's that now that's in a lot of them that's also in like uh, Today You Die, which I think is a really, there's a really weird one where he literally has his hand in his pocket, takes his hand out of his pocket, and then he goes and puts it back in his pocket. I mean, I kid, kid you not, there's a scene like that in that movie. Um, so there's a lot of weird things, and there's like another scene where in that same movie, where they meet up the guy and he's like, no, we're going to get some guns from you and blah, 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 like that. So you're talking to him. He goes, oh, man. And so he kind of gives a fist bump him or something. And he's just like. And a guy just leaves him hanging. So he just kind of, I don't know what he does. He just kind of makes something up right there. And then just, that's it. He just kind of leaves it. So there's like some strange things in some of his movies that I, I still don't really, you know. <laughs> And fire down below. I, I believe that went to the theater. I do recall that when I think I, I think that we did see that in the theater. But that one is just so hokey. I'm sorry. But how did we go from out for justice to this? I love fixing your your porch, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the Patriot, if you've not seen The Patriot, he's basically a doc, it's a, it, I mean, it's, it's a little, it's a little, um, like, it's basically a disease that gets, uh, put out throughout everybody and, uh, people start getting sick and he develops a cure by this tea. He doesn't realize it until later. Exit Wounds is, uh, we did go see that because we were excited when we saw that. Uh, we saw the, the preview for it, and we were like, oh, man, Seagal's back, you know, and that's actually not a bad movie. Exit Wounds was, uh, he actually did put effort into that. Half Past Dead was like, that yeah, was half dead of a movie because that was like, did, what were they doing here? And then, like, did he get successful with Exit Wounds and then, like, let himself go a little bit when he did Half Past Dead? I don't know. The Foreigner is really the beginning of the, 
the end for him. Uh, the Foreigner was like, that was it. These were all straight to, to VHS. Uh, these were just like, these are straight to video. The Foreigner, Out for Kill. Out for Kill is weird. And these are now, mind you, like some of these, like it's not even his voice. They overdubbed it. And Out for Kill, or yeah, Out for a Kill, it, it, it's like, there's like, they're, they're sitting there, he's like, they're in an excavation. They're excavating all these uh, uh, potteries and stuff like that. And the guy come walking around, stepping on him. And he's like, who's this guy over here? He comes here. I don't know. He's stepping on artifacts. And <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, if you want to be entertained, uh, you, you know, Friday night, big bowl of popcorn. You really don't want to think too much. You know, a lot of these, like... Into the Sun, Submerged, Today You Die, uh, Shadow Man, uh, Urban Justice, Pistol Whipped is not bad. You know, uh, The Keeper, A Dangerous Man, um, they're, they're, they're okay. They're, 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 they're all right. So, anyway, there you have it. Steven Skull stuff. <laughs> For what it's worth. 